Welcome. Let's try it out again. Those six steps to learn how to fix things on your car. Step number one, what is it? Well, it's an ignition coil. Now, this is an older coil, but let me put some late model coils up on the screen. The late model coils are called COB. Funny acronym, C-O-P, stands for coil on plug. Late model means the latest thing out, use the same kind of operation. Here's an image of all kinds of coils. It doesn't matter what they look like or where they're located. All ignition coils have worked the same way and they will continue to work the same way. What do ignition coils do? Well, they take 12 volts. 12 volts in and they multiply it a thousand times. I don't know about you, but I think that's amazing. Why do we need so much voltage? Well, we need that much voltage to jump the air gap in the spark plug. We need at least 5,000 volts to jump the air gap and we got plenty to spare. How does it work? Well, let me show you right over here. I start with a 12 volt battery. I've got this other coil set up so it's a little easier for us to continue and I've added a special switch. I'm going to use a house switch, just a plain old switch, but what I have done to that switch is I've added a condenser, like as in a points and condenser. Ignition coils need a very special negative pulse. We're going to take 12 volts. The positive is going to come to one side. This coil is just like any other load. It needs positive and it needs negative. But in this case, the negative is going to be turned off and on very quickly. What turns it off and on? Well, that's going to be the next subject next time, but basically it's an ignition module or an igniter. So here we go. I've got 12 volts. I've got this special switch hooked up with this condenser and I will put the image of the diagram. If you want to make one of these, I'll leave the image here on the screen so you can possibly get a, a shot of it so you can make your own coil tester. So let's see if this little guy works. All right. I have to be careful because now we're working with thousands of volts. I think you can see it. And if I be quiet for a minute, I bet you can hear it. That is at least 12,000 volts. Notice what I'm doing with my left hand. I'm switching it off and on. I'm not trying to pull a fast one on you folks. This is how it works. It takes 12 volts. It hooks up to the coil. The positive side is simple. From here to here, I have positive, but on the negative side, it's a little bit complicated, but it's the same thing. You take one wire at a time and you can overcome all the challenges of the difficulty of working with electrical. It's time to go test it. Remember, that's the fourth step. Step number one, what is it? Step number two, what does it do? Step number three, how does it work? Who knows what step number four is? How do you test it? Let's go to my favorite place, the hood. Under the hood, there's something important I want to show you. Here's the same coil. Let me make a little room. I've got the latches ready to go. And it's like most electrical loads. There's two wires, a positive and a negative. I'm going to take my test light and I'm going to hook it up to the negative. I believe my negative is right here. Now this one's a good example how it's very hard to see the polarity marking. If I shine my light, I could tell, but I'm pretty sure that yes, the alligator clip is on negative. I am ready to check for positive. One of these two wires is only two wires. One of those wires should be hot. Hot means positive with the key in the on position. Assistant, can you please turn the key on? Okay, the key is on. Okay, just to make sure you understand, he's gonna turn the key on and off a couple of times. Please turn the key off, turn the key on, and just leave it on now. Okay, the key is on. The coils, they need a positive with the key on. But, 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 your Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, they have what is called ASD. 
If you happen to be working on a Chrysler product and maybe even the Fiat, you have like two seconds to get this test done. It's called ASD, automatic shutdown. They're the only ones that do it. Don't get fooled by the ASD. All right, one wire down and one wire to go. It's time to check for negative. To check for negative, I'm going to reverse polarity. I'm going to take the jumper, alligator, go here. I'm going to make sure my test slide's ready to go. I go to the other wire and this one. This is what I really want to show you. I want to show you how we're going to blink. All right, helper, please crank it over. A little longer, please. All right, there. Did you see it? That is our pulsating negative. That's how coils work. You have a steady hot with a key on and you have a pulsating negative. Let's continue. Let's check the coil. We're going to use our homemade spark tester. I will leave a link in the description how to do that. Basically, it's an old spark plug that has had the negative electrode cut off and filed off a little bit. I've added a little pigtail so I can attach the jumper wire. The jumper wire is important. And I'll also leave a link in the description on how to make these instead of buy them. It's just more satisfying. I take the jumper wire, I attach it to the little pigtail, funny name, pigtail, but I believe that's what we call it. I find a good place on the engine away from the battery. I don't want any spark around the battery. I've taken the bolt out of the cop, coil on plug, coil over plug. This particular one is easy to get to. I go ahead and I get the cop, the coil on the plug up and in position. I take the homemade spark tester and I push it down into the coil. I engine off. Now, unfortunately, the late model, that means the latest thing out, that means new, the new coils, some of them have several wires. This particular one has four wires. Some of them have two wires, some have three wires, some have four wires. When it has several wires, more than two, there is a small module that makes it a little bit complicated but we have a way out. If this coil is not sparking, the best thing to do is to swap it out. That means to take another one out and put it in its place and test it. And if it works when you switch it, it's the bad coil. If it still doesn't work, that means you have a problem in the circuit that will need a little more testing. How does the coil fail? Well, it's just like any other electrical component. There's only two ways. That's it. There's only two ways for an electrical component to fail. Either it's going to go open. Open means it lacks contact. Short is the opposite of that, where it has an unwanted contact. Let me take you inside the coil. Inside the coil, there's two windings, a primary winding and a secondary winding. If either of the windings gets disconnected, it's not going to work. Open is the most common type of electrical failure today. How can you tell it's shorted? Who knows the answer? Anytime you have an unwanted connection, you're going to burn a fuse. And sure enough, I have a video explaining how fuses work. I'll be sure to leave those in the link. The last step, how do you repair it? Well, you get yourself another one and you get what you pay for. Don't buy the cheapest one. They don't last very long. Let's finish up. Thank you for the view. I hope you learned something. If you did, give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, leave them in the comment section. And if you haven't subscribed yet, we appreciate it so much if you take that time to do so. Thank you again, and keep coming back.